subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss another video of Bhakti Channel Swami. So, mm -hmm. तो, mm -hmm. तो और भगवान का कृपा कैसे मिल रहा है सबको इज एवरी वन गेटिंग इज एवरी वन नाइसली सिचुएटेड इन स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ ओके वॉट इज स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ वॉट इज द meaning of spiritual life uh, spiritual life means recognizing that we are spiritual beings that's the first lesson we are not this body we are a spirit soul so did everyone understand it properly raise your hands those who have understood that kya haath nahi uth raha kyun ek bhi haath nahi utha okay <coughs> जब देखते हैं तब हाथ उठाते थियोरिटिकली वी अंडरस्टूड दैट वी आर नॉट दिस बॉडी बट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज टू प्रैक्टिकली अंडरस्टैंड and the practical understanding will come through practice what is the practice chanting hari krishna maha mantra so everyone chanting hari krishna maha mantra who is not chanting raise your hand who is chanting raise your hand and chanting for how long twenty four hours <laughs> that is the ultimate hmm. the ultimate consideration is to chant for twenty four hours meaning even at night we'll chant Hmm. so the chanting also doesn't mean that we have to always chant the hari krishna maha mantra hmm. but speaking about krishna is also chanting when one hmm. speaks about krishna hmm, that is also chanting and at night we may not be chanting in our sleep but to dream about krishna the point is from material platform we should be elevated to the spiritual platform there are two worlds there are the only two options krishna's external energy krishna's internal energy in krishna's external energy we want to enjoy through this body and in krishna's internal energy with this body with our mind with our soul we try to serve krishna these are the only two occupations only two possible engagements we have either or mm. 
And uh, there is another possibility that is a state of being unconscious. When one is unconscious, then uh, is he existing or he is dead? Unconscious means dead. Conscious means living. I think, therefore I am. That is the ultimate concept. We think, or I am conscious, therefore I am. So when we are conscious, we can be conscious in either in the material platform or we can be conscious in the spiritual platform. When you are in the material platform, when you are in the body consciousness, then we want to enjoy through the body. The body means the senses. With our senses, we want to enjoy, which is called sense gratification. And the other is uh, spiritual consciousness. And the spiritual consciousness is Krishna consciousness. So, just try to be engaged in Krishna service. Yeah, now the consideration is why should we be Krishna conscious? Why should we be Krishna conscious? We should be Krishna conscious because we want to enjoy. Everybody wants to enjoy. In the material platform, we suffer. We want to enjoy, but we suffer. Through the body, we want to enjoy, but we suffer. But the real enjoyment comes by being situated in the Krishna consciousness. So that is what we must try to achieve. And in Krishna consciousness we do get some experience of that. Some enjoyment is there. And then the enjoyment, as you become more and more spiritually inclined, the degree of our enjoyment increases in Krishna consciousness. By serving we enjoy. By serving with Krishna we enjoy. That's the real enjoyment. By being connected to Krishna, who is Anandamai, we get Ananda. Mm -hmm. Krishna is Anandamai. Krishna is full of Ananda. So we become connected to Krishna, who is Anandamai, we get Ananda. Did you ever get electric shock? Huh? How many of you got the experience of getting shock? Huh? What actually happens? The electricity cable uh, is electric my <laughs> right? So when you touch it, then you get electricity. That is shock. So similarly, when you become, Krishna is the source of Ananda. So when you get connected to Krishna, then you get Ananda. But how to become connected to Krishna? We become connected to Krishna through service. We become connected to Krishna through love. It is our love for Krishna that connects us to Krishna. 
love Krishna. And that love is expressed through service. Service is the expression of love. So that is the process. It's a very simple process. And if I ask you, are you experiencing ananda? Are you experiencing joy? Are you experiencing joy? Very good. Yes, simple. Otherwise, why you are here? If you are not experiencing some, if you are not getting some benefit, why will you be here? Thoda bohut. Lab to ho raha hai. If you came and somebody was beating you, will you be here? So you are here because you are experiencing the joy. Everybody is experiencing the joy. And the point is, try to experience that joy. Don't stay in the temple practicing the process of Krishna consciousness without the purpose of that joy. Then you are wasting time. If you are just here but not really experiencing the joy, then for some time you will be here, then you will go away. But when you get that joy, then you will stay. <clears throat> Staying not only in the temple, but staying in Krishna Consciousness. So, and it is not that we are trying to be Krishna Conscious to enjoy, but we are trying to be Krishna Conscious to find the real purpose of our existence. We are not serving Krishna to enjoy. Sometimes service is difficult. Like Arjun is serving Krishna, how fighting a battle. Diff very difficult battle. Was that battle enjoying? The, was the battle the source of enjoyment? He was not enjoying fighting the battle. But through the serving Krishna, through the battle, he became connected to Krishna. And that's how he was enjoying. At the end of the battle, when Krishna, when Arjun considered, Oh, so many things happened. So many times I could have been dead. It was an impossible battle to win. But I won because Krishna was pleased with me. Because I was serving him, because I was connected to him, because I was loving him, and in order to express my love, I was fighting for him, Krishna rewarded me such a way. So this is the enjoyment in Krishna Consciousness. This is how one enjoys in Krishna Consciousness. We, we experience the joy. Like, sometimes it's difficult. I mean, it's not always easy. Like the pujari is serving uh, the deities. It's not easy, you know, that service. Like so much, like in winter time, early morning, take bath and just wearing a chadar go to the altar. It's freezing cold. So, when one is serving, then it's not enjoying. 
When he's serving, then it is he's serving. The service is difficult. The cooks in the kitchen, in the middle of summer, in the heat, they're cooking. They're sweating all over. That is not enjoying. This is difficult. But he is doing it. Why? Because externally, physically, he may not be uh, experiencing that. Physically, he may be facing the difficulty. But within his heart, he is enjoying. So the point is, joy in Krishna consciousness doesn't come through the body. The joy in Krishna consciousness comes within the heart. Joy in Krishna consciousness is not experienced by the body. The joy in Krishna consciousness is experienced by the soul. Therefore, in spite of all the difficulties devotees are carrying, devotees carry on year after year. Life after life. In America, there is a new devotee who came to join. He's an American. New means he came to D land, our farm, quite new. And <clears throat> he was working outside. D land can, Florida can be, get quite hot in summer. So I got out of the car, I saw him and completely drenched with sweat. So jokingly I told him, Oh, so you had a bath with your clothes on? <laughs> and so I told him that don't, when it's so hot you don't have to work outside. And he said, no, I am enjoying it. <laughs> so is, it is so hot, it is so difficult that he is completely drenched with sweat. Mm. But he says that he is enjoying it. So where is that enjoyment? Through the body? That enjoyment is with the soul. And those who experience that, they remain fixed up. It is difficult to be Krishna conscious. It's very difficult to be Krishna conscious. It's very difficult to be fixed up. Because this is the world of Maya. This is the world of Maya. Maya is everywhere. What we are seeing is Maya. What we are hearing is Maya. Everywhere is Maya. The world of Maya. But we got the message of Krishna. We got to know who is Maya and who is Krishna. We got to know what is the benefit in being with Krishna and what is the difficulty in being in Maya. So that's why that is the meaning of becoming Krishna conscious. Sarinda, Sarinda. Just do what Krishna wants you to do. And then what will happen? Krishna will take care of you. Krishna hmm, takes care of us in two ways. He preserves what we have and He provides what we lack. That's called Yoga Kshema. Krishna is declaring Yoga Kshema Baham Maham. What you need, I will give you. And what you have, I'll protect. 
So we experience that. Krishna is providing. Sometimes people ask that what is your source of income? ISKCON is a big organization. When they ask what is the source of income, they mean they ask whether we have businesses or whether we have some enterprises to make money. I tell them, no, we don't have any business. So how do you maintain such big establishment? So Krishna provides. Krishna is providing. As a matter of fact, as a leader of ISKCON, I do not know where the money is coming from, but it comes. Personally, I've been getting involved with so many projects involving lots of money Krishna provides. Today I can tell you frankly, when I embarked in building this temple, I didn't have any money. But now we came on the invitation of Madhya Pradesh government and then at that time we are supposed to get 300 acres of land and we, I was having a meeting with the Indian leaders so the question came to me that how will you how will you do that? Do you have the means to undertake 300 acres of land project? I said, no. But the question is, I have two questions. Should we accept this project? Should we accept this offer? And the second question was, that if I don't, then who is anybody willing to take this offer? And no one came forward. Of course, we didn't get 300 acres of land. That was also Krishna's arrangement. At that time, if I took, or, took up 300 acres of land, then it would have been really difficult. But instead of 300 acres, we got this four acres of land or we can say six acres of land and even then we embarked on this project of building the temple I didn't have any I mean naturally this involved crores of rupees but when we embarked the money came as I said, I don't know how it came, but it came at the right time. So we have to believe that Krishna was providing. I remember when the first bill came from a contractor, um, Om Prakash Khatri, that was bill was 30 lakhs. And Sham Mohan, many of you know him, he was the engineer who was supervising the project so <clears throat> he just came with bill 30 lakhs he knew <laughs> that there was no money in the bank <laughs> or if we had at all there was very little money we had I mean, not to we are not able to pay 30 lakhs so I told Shamohan don't worry. And Khatri was very nice also. So he just told me, Maharaj, please don't worry about the payment. Like if you don't have the money, huh, you can take your time to pay the money. Of course he knew that money has to be paid, otherwise why he would be worried. And then one after another bill came and all the bills were paid in time. 
for everything. The contractor, <clears throat> the marble people, and and not only that, like it came up, this temple came up in a record time. Uh, nine months, twenty days. Not only this temple, the next building, so they all came in. in nine months, twenty days. So this is how Krishna, we have to have the confidence that Krishna will provide. If I am doing it for Krishna, Krishna will provide. So carry on with your spiritual life with the confidence. Krishna will provide. And at the same time, I can also tell you frankly, that I did think that we need money, in order to get money we have to have business. And we tried to run some business and that business was a failure. Through the business we didn't earn money, we lost money in the business. So what's the lesson we learned from that? Hmm. When you're serving Krishna, don't worry about anything. But that's not doesn't mean that you don't make an effort, but make the effort in the right <coughs> way. So I am telling all these things frankly to you because you all are the future leaders of our movement. You have to carry this movement forward. Therefore, I am sharing my experiences with you. Do things for Krishna. Just do it with full earnestness and have the confidence that Krishna will provide. Otherwise, why Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita, Jogakshima Vaham Maham. Yoga anyway, so become very good devotees. It's not that all of us have to become big, big devotees. Wherever we are, in this respect, Prabhupada gave an example that there are birds. Some birds, like sparrows, they fly around the courtyard. There are some birds that fly from uh, one country to another. There are some birds that fly from one continent to another. And there are some birds that fly from one planet to another. So it depends upon the ability of the bird that it flies. Similarly, according to our abilities, we will serve. According to our abilities, we will preach. But we must serve, we must preach. Not that everybody will preach. There are so many servants. Those who are cooking in the kitchen. Those who are doing the pujaris in the temple room, in the altar, they may not be preaching, but without them the preaching won't go on. They are providing for the preaching. If the cooks in the kitchen don't cook, will you be able to preach? No. The food must come in time. Similarly, the deities, I also wanted to, when I was seeing the deities, I wanted to thank the pujaris for taking care of the deities so nicely. The deities look so beautiful and so happy. So, 
please continue to serve in this way. And this is preaching. They may not be physically speaking to people, but when people come and see the deities, then they get devotion in their heart. That is preaching. When they come to the temple and get nice prasad, that's preaching. So everyone in Krishna consciousness is preaching, either directly or indirectly. So become very nicely engaged. And one thing don't ever neglect is Harinam. Harinam is the means of spreading Krishna consciousness. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Ivakiva. So the temple management, make it a point to, to regularly take the devotee vow to preach. <coughs> And do it whenever there's an opportunity. The other day I was recalling, I was remembering, I was in Mauritius and one evening I was having a program in a devotee's house. And there were many, many devotees who were there in the program. And we are having a very nice kirtan. I was leading the kirtan. It was night, must have been around 9, nine o'clock or 9.30, I don't exactly remember what time it was. So while doing the kirtan, I said, let's go out. So I walked out of the room and went into the road and everyone followed me. And we went around and had a kirtan. And people were just coming out of the house. So it was a spontaneous thing, but it had such a wonderful uh, result. Even now people remember that kirtan that we had at night. Not only our, us, even those who are outside people. So I'll say, like, make it a point, like, not that any specific time that you have to do Kirtan, Nagar Sankit. Even at night, just go out. <laughs> even in the morning, go out. <laughs> so this is how the Holy Name <laughs> is going to change this world. Yes, that is our mission, to change this world. This world is not moving in the right way, not in the right direction. This world today is moving in a very dangerous direction. Now we have to stop that course. That is what our mission should be. Change this world, change the course the world is going. Let it go in another direction. From Maya, let the world go to Krishna. Individually, us also, every one of us, from Maya, let's go towards Krishna. Thank you very much. So, I'll be doing the kirtan this evening. Today. I would say that I'll be there for the kirtan today. And tomorrow also I'll give a class in the morning. But then I'll start a treatment. I'm having some health issues. so. I did, that's why I came early. I was supposed to come on the 9th of September. No, not 9th, 10th of September. But I came early. 
I thought that I'll take the treatment. And that's why I came early. I came for the treatment. And then after that, we'll have a seminar. So, cool, you'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Gaur Premanande. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah.